Hey everyone, today we're talking about the Seaborn cat plot. So for starters, what is the cat plot? Well, I hate to disappoint you, but these are the only cats you'll see in this video, because the cat plot stands for categorical plot. With it, you'll get access to all of Seaborn's categorical plots, including the box plot, strip plot, and the bar plot. The cat plot is based upon Seaborn's facet grid. That means that you'll be able to create small multiples based on categorical variables in your data. When it comes to styling your cat plot, you'll be able to pass keyword arguments directly through to the kind of plots you've created. You'll also have access to facet grid methods and attributes. Now let's get started with the basics of the Seaborn cat plot code. So let's get started coding. I'm first going to import the Seaborn library, and then today we're going to look at some data about cars, so I'm going to load that data in from the Seaborn library and drop any rows with missing values. I'm also going to filter down to only cars with four, six, or eight cylinders, and I'm creating one new column called type that has old if the car has a model year less than or equal to 76, and new otherwise. Once all that's done, we're left with 385 cars in our data frame. I set my styling to be white, and now we're ready to create our very first cat plot. To do that, I just reference the Seaborn library and call up the cat plot function. And now I'm just going to say what value I'd like to plot. So let's do the horsepower of these cars. And this is coming from the cars data frame. So x references the column name and data references the data frame. All right, so there we go. The default cat plot is actually going to be a strip plot. So you see across the x-axis I have the horsepower, and then I have one individual scatter point for every single car in my data set. And if we'd prefer to have a vertical strip plot instead of a horizontal one, we could just switch this instead of x, we could say y for the horsepower. That'll give us a vertical strip plot. So the very first big benefit of using Seaborn's cat plot is that you now have access to all of Seaborn's category plots. So strip plot is the default, but if we'd like to change this to a different type of categorical plot, we can reference this argument called kind. And here I'm just passing in a string that represents the type of plot I'd like to create. So let's say we want to make a box plot instead. I'd write kind equals box, and there we go. Now we have a box plot for the same horsepower data. And let's try one more example. Let's say that kind equals violin. There we go, a nice violin plot for these horsepower data. And so you have access to all of Seaborn's different categorical plots, which can be super useful if you're not quite sure exactly which of those plots you'd like to use yet. So since it's called the cat plot, we can definitely plot out various different categories in our data. So let's take a look at a couple of options there. Right now, I just have the horsepower along the y-axis, and I have a box plot for that. But if you have an additional category column, you could put that on, let's say, the x-axis. So let's say that x equals origin. And there we go. Seaborn will split out each of the different origins of our cars along the x-axis. So we have one box for USA, one for Japan, and one for Europe, because that's what's in the origin column. And we can go even further. Let's say that we have a second category we'd like to know about. We could pass that to this hue argument. So let's say the cylinders. And now we're able to group the data based on origin and then based on cylinder. So each of those blue boxes represent four cylinder cars. And then we have orange for six and green for eight. So this is nice because I can compare all of those different categories on equal footing. For example, if I'm looking at those orange boxes, the six cylinder cars from Japan and Europe tend to have more horsepower for these data. And not only can we break out our data into multiple categories, remember that you still have the option to change what kind of plot you're looking at. So right now we have a box plot, but we can really easily switch over to, say, a violin. Besides just having access to all of Seaborn's categorical plots, the cat plot also allows you to build small multiples based on Seaborn's facet grid. Let's check it out. Another really cool way that you can show off different categories with the cat plot is to access the fact that the cat plot is built on top of the facet grid. 
And so what that means is that we can actually create small multiples with our figures very, very easily. So right now in this figure, I'm showing off the different cylinders, four, six, or eight, and I have the horsepower on the y-axis, and I have a box plot. What I could do instead is actually create one small figure for each of the different origins. So let's try that. If I set the call argument, which stands for column, to be origin, I'm actually going to create one different column for every single origin in my data set. So I have one figure for the US, one figure for Japan, and one for Europe. So this is another really, really cool way to be able to split up different categories using the cat plot. And so now we have these two different levers we can pull. We have the different facets and we can still change what kind of plot we're putting in each of these. So let's switch back over to the strip plot, say. And so the cat plot has all of these options rolled into one function. And I think you're gonna be able to find a lot of really interesting ways to use this. And you can really go super far with this. Let's say you have another category that you'd like to show off. I'll put that in the row dimension. And so now I'm getting one different column for each of the different origins. And I have one different row for each of the types of cars. Here's my old cars and my new cars. And so you can really slice and dice your data in many, many different ways by leveraging all of the different facet options. And one final thing I wanted to tell you about, if you ever do find that these facets are not in the order that you'd prefer, you can always access these properties uh, called row order or call order. You don't need to reorder your data in any way. You can just pass in a list of how you'd like these rows to appear. So let's say I want to put the new cars on the top row and the old cars in the bottom row. So without doing anything to the underlying data, I can access this property to just switch what's on the top and what's on the bottom. And you can do the same thing for the different columns, the different hues, the order uh, within each figure. All of those are options within Seaborn. And now let's see how you can style a cat plot. Like other Seaborn plots, there's lots and lots of different styling that you can do. So let's take a look at a few examples. When I am styling these figures within the cat plot, the types of arguments I'm going to be using reference the same types of arguments I would normally use when, say, using a box plot. So whatever kind of figure I have on my cat plot, that's the types of arguments that I'm going to be using. So let's say first we maybe want to change the color. We could reference the palette option. And there we go, some nice blue colors. And because I am dealing with a box plot, so again, the types of arguments I'm going to be using should reference whatever kind of figure I'm making. Because I'm dealing with a box plot here, I could reference the whisker length. And so instead of having it set to 1.5, which is the default, I could make those whiskers a little bit shorter and consider more points outliers. If I have a strip plot, on the other hand, on my cat plot, my arguments should now reference the types of arguments I would use when making a strip plot. So I could, for example, increase the size of those dots. I could change their alpha, their transparency. Or I could maybe even add a little line around the outside. And there we go. So the arguments that you're using in here to style should match the kind of plot you have on your cat plot. The other way that you can style your cat plot is by recognizing that the cat plot is built upon the facet grid. So the cat plot actually returns an object. I'm going to save that object as the letter G. And if I were going to check the type of that object, it is a facet grid. So anything that you know about styling facet grids, you can still do with a cat plot. So I'll show you one example here, but go ahead and check out my past video about the facet grid if you want to learn more. So let's say I have this cat plot of cylinders and horsepowers, and each of my facets represents a different origin. Um, one thing I could do to start off, I'm actually going to increase the font scale because it's kind of small right now. So let's say I wanted to set this to be 1.5. That'll increase all of the fonts on all of my figures. Now I can leverage the fact that I have this facet grid and say for the facet grid, I'm going to set the titles. And the way that we set titles within a facet grid, we can reference this column template. And let's say that I'll use the column name and then write cars after that. And so what that's done is actually change the titles of each of these facets. I'm pulling in the name of that column, either USA, Japan, or Europe, and then I'm just writing the word cars after that. So any kind of styling you know how to do for a facet grid, you should be able to do for the cat plot as well. Hope you enjoyed learning all about the Seaborn cat plot. 
All of the code I demoed is available on my GitHub page. And if you want to learn more about the Seaborn Facet Grid, you can check out my video about that or my full Intro to Seaborn playlist where I talk about each of those different categorical plots. Thanks so much, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.